church but I had seen a king standing or a man standing in the middle of the floor and like a spotlight came on and, and the Lord was talking to the man and he said um, I have chosen you to be a king do you accept and the man said yes Lord I'll do it and he said uh, he put a robe on him he put a diadem in his hand he put a crown of thorn a crown not a thorns a crown on his head and he said, and the king, the man said, I will uh, rule, Lord, with righteousness. And he picked up a Bible. He said, I'll make sure that everything is done by your commandments, and I'll do it your way, and I'll be harsh against those that don't do it, but I'll be merciful to those that repent. And the Lord said, good. And he said, who do you want me to rule over? And the Lord said, yourself. Yeah. And um, I thought about that and how Brother Adams has been, has been talking the last few nights, and, or days and nights, about um, the marriage laws and, and what we have to do to rule our own spirit and to rule our own tongue and like that. And that last verse said, and forevermore I shall reign with yes. him. And I thought, my God, here's my chance to yes. forevermore reign yes. over my yes. spirit. It ain't about yes. reigning over everybody else, Sister Mark. Yes. <laughs> this is a milk right here. <laughs> and he's my king. And oh, how I love him. And I was thinking this morning, I was up praying and I was thinking about um, there's just days, and I don't know why, I don't know where it comes from, whether it's DNA or, you know, whatever, but there's just days I wake up feeling like a cat with his hair up, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know how those cats bow their back when you do something, they don't really like it, and they, they just bow, maybe y'all don't know about cats, but if you do something a cat don't really like, or maybe he's just in a bad mood or whatever, they'll bow their back and all the hair on their back will stand straight up, and that's letting you know, whatever you're doing, you better stop, or <laughs> well, you're fixing to get scratched or hissed at or something, sometimes they'll even kind of hiss at you, you know, and there's days I wake up feeling that way, I don't know why. Maybe something's irritating me or whatever. I just feel irritable. And there's something in me that when I feel irritable in myself, I don't want to accept that as I just feel that way. I want to say, you made me feel this way. <laughs> Usually it's him. He's my <laughs> so I feel like whatever he's doing, he is doing something that is irritating me. <laughs> and I want to make, I want to show him I'm irritated. I want to and I may just say, uh, you know, and I just keep saying, uh, or whatever, until it, like Brother Adam said, them are fighting words. <laughs> and sometimes I have fighting words in me. Sometimes I have a fighting spirit in me. But I also know how to reign over that thing, Sister Margaret. So I know that I don't have to say every earth uh, that comes in my mind. And lately, I've been getting some good victories, too. Because lately, it's like, I know that scripture that says, uh, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I found out a long time ago when I feel like, you know, I'm in a bad mood, if I put on a smile and I start being nice, right. that bad mood will flee yes, from me. Yes, and so I have found out, yes, even will. recently, I have found out again. And uh, but it was something that he did the other day. I think he was working at the church and he came in at like almost midnight and I was irritated. I was irritated, I was tired, I was hungry, because we hadn't had supper yet, and actually I was just irritated, okay? So he come in, and it come to my mind, yeah, just uh -uh, and just keep on until you get a fight going on, you know? It just came to my spirit like that. And I said, I lay there in bed, I heard the door open, him coming in, and I said, no, I am not going to fight with my husband who's just been working at the church for the Lord. Right, I am going to support him, and I'm going to let him know I love him. And when he right. come in, I said, hi, honey, you're finally home. And did you, you know, did y'all get a lot done? And, you know, and we talked, and everything was cool because there wasn't no wood on the fire for that. <laughs> everything was cool. And, you know, I'm just saying that God knows how to reign over yeah, our spirit, yes. and he knows how to teach us how to reign over our spirit. Because that whatever that is in me that wants to bow up and go, 
on those days. I'm learning to say, calm yourself back down. It ain't going to be like that. And God makes it better and better and better. And my marriage is good. And my marriage just keeps getting better and better because God keeps stepping in and teaching me how to do, do these things that I need to do. I appreciate the Lord for these teachings. I praise God for it. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God is real. Holy Ghost is real, Sister Debbie. <coughs> I went home last night. Brother, I've got a little uh, revelation he said last night on my scripture about soft things or turns away wrath. And I had got that before. I got that a long time ago because that's the scripture that the Lord had used to save my marriage. I mean, really save my marriage. Many times that scripture saved me. But um, yesterday, of course, I was so grumpy. Me and Tori had went to lunch. Let me back up. We had, I had, my, my kitchen was trashed. My house was a mess. Kitchen was trashed. I had baked brownies for my kids on my bus. Um, cut the ham and stuff up for the for the funeral thing and left everything. The cat had taken the yarn and went from one end of the house all the way around to the other. Chris didn't think it was funny. I thought it was humorous. It was all wrapped up under the rolling of the chairs and everything. I mean, and so he come home yesterday. He was, and Chris don't get mad. I mean, he just yeah. don't, you know, he's just not built like that. And he was grumpy. I mean, usually when we have leftovers for church night, he will fix each other's plate and we do for each other, you know. He fixed his plate, took all the meat stuff, and left. <laughs> I said, wow, okay. You've got two choices. And, Brother Adams, I promise you, yesterday when we was at lunch, we talked about almost everything that was said last night. It was awesome. And and so I went home, and I could hear, I kept hearing Brother James. All this time, you hear Brother James, when you get to the uh, Valley of Baca, make it a well. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. <laughs> so by the time last night came, y'all, I said, that scripture that said, uh, I was glad when they said, come to the house of the Lord. I was glad to leave. <laughs> you know? And I left it. My intention was to leave it. I'm like, I'm tired. 4.30 comes early. My kids on my bus have been cutting up. I'm exhausted. I'm going to leave it. I'll clean it this morning. That was my goal. I'm going home, go to bed, and go to church today. I went home last night. I walked in the house and took all my stuff over, and I'm like, I'm going to bed. And that scripture, a soft answer turns away for him. And I, I looked around this kitchen, and I said, oh, you got to be joking me. <laughs> I said, Lord, you, I said, no, I said, a soft answer turns away wrath. And it was like the Lord was showing me my soft answer was for my husband to get up and have a clean kitchen, a clean dining room, his coffee set up, and things ready because he had to work today. And I said, okay, Lord, I've learned enough over the years. I ain't arguing with the Holy Ghost no more. So at midnight, y'all, I was mopping floors. I was sweeping and mopping floors, and God gave me some energy. I'm telling you, and I appreciated it this morning when I got up, because then I could sit and have my coffee and enjoy Jesus. And then this morning, because of obeying that last night, <laughs> I got up, I turned on some TV tape, Lena. And let me tell you, I'm telling you, I had some time in Jesus this morning. Praise God. So the Holy Ghost is real. God is real. The Word of God is real. And I'm telling you, I know it. I know it. I know. And I've learned. If I apply it, it will absolutely fix anything. It will fix anything. I've been going through some things, not seeing, not understanding, kicking, screaming, fighting. But God. I said, but I'm determined. I'm going to make it through it. I'm going to make it through it. I'm determined to walk on with Jesus. I appreciate the Lord for that. I tell you, I worked two and a half hours. I really didn't think it was that much of a mess. But I worked two and a half hours. But God gave me the energy. And this morning, it looked all sparkly and clean. So I appreciate the Lord for that. I got a new revelation on that, Brother Adam. A soft answer turns away wrath. And it was just so my husband could get up and have a clean 
kitchen and a clean environment to start his day on. I appreciate Ooh. that. Yeah. That was wonderful. That was almost better than what I've been saying. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, I do appreciate the Lord also. And first of all, I do want to say thank you for my party. It was it was the Lord, and I want you to know that it was the Lord. When I finish, you'll know that it was the Lord. Okay, I um, had a dream. I guess it was Tuesday. One day last week. I want to say Monday or Tuesday. And in this dream... Um, we was at the sisters retreat and mother in law and Gino was there and she was um, singing a song. She just stood up and started to sing a song. Then here comes Sister Betty Hoffman. She went to um, Sister Longina and told her, you have no right to sing no song. You, you don't um, go to this church. And I mean, she just started really fussing with her and and carrying on, and so I'm like, no, don't y'all do that. Don't, please, don't, don't do that. You got to learn to forgive. You got to, don't do that. And so it, it got so heated up. I mean, I had to actually break them apart. And so it was like a wall up. And so I took Sister Betty on the other side of the wall, and I, I said to Sister Betty. Forgive. Don't don't do that. I'm just really talking to her, trying to talk nice to her, trying to have this soft answer, you know, talk real nice. And she was just really, really mad. She was just cutting up. I said, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And I started pleading the blood of Jesus on her and, and, and broken that spirit on her. And I kept telling her, I said, you got to forgive. You just have to forgive in the name of Jesus. And, and I'm just going for it. And I got this blessed on I got to thinking about, in my dream, the pig in the power. What is this? And the Lord said, pride. Got to get rid of that pride. So I got on the floor. Started casting out that pride. Got that blessed Lord, putting it all on her lips. And here comes Brother Debbie. I said, no, not right now. You have to go. <laughs> <laughs> they come in like you know. You, I said, no, you have to go. <laughs> and now I got her. I got her. I got her pinned down on the, on the floor. Just walk with me in the spirit with it. Yeah. That's right. And so um, she raised up and she said, "I forgive. I forgive." I said, "Okay, now let's go tell Sister Lord Gina that you forgive her." Okay, so. She went and she got into Salon Jesus' face on the other side of the wall. And she said, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? <coughs> so Salon Gina said, no, I will not. She said, I will not forgive you. And I said, come on now, Sister Salon Gina. You have to forgive. I'm trying, you know, to be the middle man. You have to forgive. I said, uh, you just have to just forgive and get rid of the pride and just go ahead. She said, I'm not going to forgive her. And I woke up. I woke up speaking in tongues. Just, you know, the whole nine yards just cutting up. And I'm saying, Lord, what mean is this? And he said, he told me it was pride. And that was a lot of the problem was the pride. And that, that was the, what he said was, that was the root of it, was pride. Don't want to say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And so with all that being said, I'm getting so excited. And now the Lord flashed back my birthday party. And he showed me, even with Desi coming in the door, saying happy birthday to me and stuff. <laughs> it wasn't the time. I did tell you to go to the basement. <laughs> but this... <laughs> He showed me um, the birthday party, how it was ordained of him. And, and, and just go with me. And I'm like, okay. Now, um, what's her name? Rochelle. Sister Rochelle got up 
she spoke well and she was talking about how the Lord was saving her children. It was her. And then um, the girl was came, got up, sister, uh, what's your sister's name? Them. Oh, y'all see my kids with the name. She was talking about get out the, you, you, you got out the box, stay in the box. Mm -hmm. And then the icing got put on the cake. Sister um, Deborah Fox, Brother Fox's wife, got up and got to talking about Proverbs 31. <laughs> and she used me. I was that lady. The Lord showed me all this now. That I was that lady, that virtuous woman, that nah, 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 nah. And then Sister Debbie got up and put the icing on the cake. I didn't puff myself up now, because right. I didn't take it for being me. The Lord showed me in that dream, he was talking about the daughters of Jerusalem. Yes. And what it takes to be a daughter of Jerusalem. I tell you, I shouted, I shouted, and I shouted, and, and I cried again. And then I said, well, let me get up and write all this stuff down. After I calmed down, I grabbed my book, my pen, and I tried to write, and my hand was just shaking. So I said, okay, I grabbed my phone, I said, I'm talking. So I got my phone and put it on that record thing, and I tried my best to say what the Lord had gave me and and to talk about the dream. Anyway, I couldn't do it. I did it like that. When I picked up my paper, I said, now I'm going to go and read the book of Proverbs again. And now I know what the Lord was saying to me on it, right? I picked up my, my notebook and here my baby Jada had some stuff in there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It was given with us forgiveness and the pride. And I'm like, how does paper get here? I mean, it's been there, it had to be there for months because I had my um, notebook. I keep it by my bed in case the Lord give me something I can prepare to jot it down. And when I got that book and it had that on there, and then I'm saying, all right, Lord, what are you saying now? He took my mind back. Sister um, Debbie had texted me this a month ago. Month for that, I had gave it to Margaret. I said, I think this is what I want to use. I said, Mark said, well, I thought maybe you wanted something that said something about the daughters of Jerusalem, you know, that's got that word in it. I said, but this is what I'm feeling. So after she said it like that, I said, well, maybe that's not it. And when Sister Debbie gave it to me, I said, well, bless the Lord, she's being nice, you know. And, and I was filled with it. But when it came up again and again, it blessed my soul. So I just Appreciate the Lord for that. That's how he can just use little simple things. And he was showing me. I, I couldn't understand why I was crying so much. I just had, I felt so much love at that setting. Um, it was like, it was just anointed. Even down to the, the song that, um, how we were loving the Lord more than silver and gold. And uh, that song, I mean, it really just. It started it up. It, it really, it really just, I was just trying to figure out why. I was just feeling this all over me. It was just like, I felt the love of the sisters and it was just really blessing me. And then my baby got up and her and Jada started singing the song about the diamonds you wore, um, beautiful and a diamond, shine like a diamond. And, yeah, shine bright like a diamond. I'm like, and all that was for all of y'all. It wasn't just for me. Ain't God good? Yes, he is. I appreciate the Lord so much and how he can just use a simple thing and we just listen to him. Just listen to him, that soft answer turns into great wrath. And just being good to your husband and being forgiven and giving away with the pride. So I appreciate him again and again and again. Thank you, Jesus.
my voice has been really funky here for like the last three or four months. I'm going to try to sing this song. <laughs> Thank you. 
I appreciate you telling the dream. Yeah. That person yeah. kind of likes Matthew, but you know, everyone here, well, not everyone here, but you all know my mom. So don't think I'm talking bad about my mom. My mom was a wonderful sister. Yes, she was. Wonderful yes, she was. mother. Yes, she, was. she loved me with all of her heart. Yes. And uh, I could never say nothing bad about my mom. The only thing I could say was if you touched one of hers, you was in trouble. <laughs> whether it be your children or whether it be your grandchildren, don't even touch them with your lips because your mouth, because she would stand up quick just like in that dream. Wow. Now, that dream, I know that wasn't my mother, but that was, to me, that's the church. You know, and uh, she, she white hair, she's, she's the hoary head or whatever. I don't know if they use that with the sisters or not, but hoary head, sorry, but... Uh, that that was my mom, and um, and you know I, I now let me change it from just my mom. It comes naturally. You know, genes is genes. Our genes are are amazing. Um, I can go through every one of my mom's sisters, bar none, and they all had that same rise up, slay. They had that in them, and and I love them. I love them to death because on the other hand, they love you. And when they give you, they love you, they love you, you know, and, uh, but you know what? There's times in each of them where they'd be like that. There's, what, six of them, I think, six sisters. And, um, and if they did something to each other, it was hard for them to forget. They'd want to hold a grudge for eternity. I'm serious. I watched them. I watched them. I watched them. And it broke my heart. can't be that way. Right. You know, we got Adam in our genes. Our genes come from Adam, every bit of that. Whether it's jealousy, whether it's envy, or jealousy produces envy, envy produces strife, and the next thing you know is every evil work is happening if we don't cut that thing before it's done. Right, right. You know, and um, I, I love flowers. I love spring that's coming around the corner. I love, I can't believe my wife made me this way. My dad was this way and I hated it in her. My God, don't you see you're a man? I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a young teenager, a young man. Why did he got this thing with flower rose bushes? He loved them. So oh, come here, let me show you what I did. And I thought, cool, Dad. <laughs> no, it's fun. Let's, let's play some ball, you know. Uh, and he did that too. But I can't believe my wife ever changed me to, to where I love spring and I love watching life. I wa love watching something resurrect from something that was dead. You know, I'm not much for the annuals. I, I hate buying annuals. They're beautiful, but they don't come back. They don't resurrect. You know, and. Uh, that's the way this world is. Uh, not the world, but anyway. Uh, perennials, they come back every year. And some of them can even be planted in the wrong areas. I mean, but if you cover them, there's a pretty good chance that they'll come back. But my whole thought of this, I've lost my thought, but I love this time of year. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Jesus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yes, forgiveness and grudges. And I'm serious. I'm hoping some of them got some of them took care of before they left here. And I preached it to them. And uh, I hope they did. I really hope they did because, you know, you can't have that. You cannot have that. And if you die with that, I don't know. I might hate the, you, you might make the second resurrection. But the first resurrection, I'm free that will keep you out. So, so God, help us. Help us. Help us to love one another. Yes. Help us to, to, to see the good in each other. Because there's good in each and every one. There's more good than there is evil. But if, if you just see that evil, that's all you see. If you only see one of them, this person may only have one thing. And if that's all you can see, you may not get over it because you're so blinded by that one thing. And uh, I, you've heard me tell that Brother Tucker absolutely had... A sheep brought into the church service, a white sheep, stood right here with another man holding the white sheep. And there was a little black dot that they stuck on that, black sheep, on that white sheep. And he asked, what do you see? Everybody saw the dot. But the rest of the sheep was white. Perfectly beautiful white. 
We need to see the white. Come on. Yes. We need to see the white. Yes. And if we see that little spot, we need to pray for it. Yes. Oh, I know where I've gone. The roots. Oh, my God. That's where I've gone to the flowers and things. And uh, things that don't belong in your flower bed. And if it be true out in the garden, I, I watched my dad garden year after year after year. And my brother gardens. And I respected him. It's too much work for me. I'll just be honest. It's work. If you want, you think it's not work, you're wrong. That is work. That is work. Flower bed is work. But the garden can be acres. The flower bed is right here. So, you know, um, but it amazes me how much water grass and how much different things could just one seed, one winter. They're still growing. They're still growing. They don't wait till spring to grow. They're growing all winter long. They're spreading. They're going because they're planning on taking over that bed. They're planning on taking it over. And so, you've got to keep that roots from spreading. Yeah, yeah. You've got to keep it from spreading because pretty soon it'll kill everything in that bed. And that bed was so beautiful. Oh, I missed my flowers because the roots sat there and choked everything out, choked the life right out of them. And they're dead. And they won't come back even if they're perennials because you let a root get in there and choke it till it dies. It didn't get what it needed no more because that root starved it out. That root wanted to be, it wanted to be it. It wanted to be king, Sister Debbie. It wanted to be king over, over and not let it, the plants. And no plants didn't want to be king. They just stayed right there and just did what God intended them for to do. And that's the way we're to be. Right. So I'm thankful today. I'm thankful to be here. And I, I felt that song the other day and I didn't sing it either. I didn't sing it then because of my voice. But it's tenderness, Lord. God, don't let me get stony heart. Don't let me get a stony heart. Don't let me get callous like Brother Andrew was talking about. Where that, where that woman was able to reach in there and grab a coal. And pick it up and not get burnt. Because her fingers were callous. Don't let me get callous where I can't feel when I'm striking somebody and I'm killing them. Oh, God, don't let me get that way. you got to keep me tender. And help me to see the good in others and to love them and to bring out the good in others. To make that sheep completely white. I just wanted to say a few things. I just wanted to say um, the Lord was showing me that I was... Oh, that's right. Brother... Um, the Lord was showing me with your mother was that she was deceased. She was dead. And that's why she was able to forgive. And then oh, with, uh, yeah. she, then sister, Mother Lauren Gino was alive. She still mm -hmm. had that in her. And that's why she wouldn't forgive. Right. My sister, um, <coughs> your mother, she was able to forgive. She died. She died out to right. those right. things right. and right. cried. Right. And that's why I was looking at her. Okay. Yeah. For all these things today, I'm certainly thankful for having everyone that's here today and these testimonies that has uh, already blessed us, these songs that has already blessed us, him being king of our lives. And, and of course, that's what we ultimately want him to be is the, the king of our lives. We sing those songs as. Uh, God said about Abraham is that he, he speaks the things that are not as though they were because king means that he is a sovereign ruler over our lives. That whatever he has asked of us to do, that we will respond to it. Amen. And, uh, and, and when he gives a command, well, the word of a king is there's power. That's Ecclesiastes 8, 4, 5, somewhere in there. Yeah, for where the word of a king is, there's power. And and who may say unto him, What doest thou? Because the commandment shall fear no evil. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. But the main key is that where the word of a king is, there's power. Amen. So wherever God says something, if he's king in your life, there's a response to that. That's immediate response. There's no... 
Well, I don't want to do that. It's not that. It's a, uh, that soft answer that God speaks in a way that it should bring about a response. It should bring a response to us. And uh, uh, we're, we're, we've been talking, in, of course, about marriage. And again, uh, I made mention that we had the Mac Michaels there with us. We're glad for them being here. Amen. And glad to see also one of my sons here with us. And uh, how old are you today? 27. We've been in this building here 27 years. James is a mark. We mark him. That's how we mark this building by him. We got history here. That's how you mark it. We've been in this building 27 years. Amen. But God was awful a bit. You said 28. Did you say 27? All right, forgive me. Then. Sorry. <laughs> Amen, but we're glad for them being with us here. We'll hear from them later. And so, we was talking on uh, last night, and, and of course, been talking the last couple of weeks on, on these things. And it's amazing how that God, through the scriptures, liking, he likes the marriage, uh, the natural marriage, just to the spiritual church, to the church. And that's why the church is likened unto a woman. And uh, the ministry is likened unto a man. But Christ in that instance, or in this instance, is the husband. He's the, he's the man. In Ephesians, uh, we'll use that in Ephesians 5. Uh, the uh, 20th verse. Last night we was in First Peter, and I'm sure I'll, I'll journey back there for, in a moment to make a point. Uh, he says uh, in verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So there should be a submission that takes place in a a relationship, a husband and wife relationship, there should be a, a submitting of one to uh, the other uh, in, in, in reference to bringing honor to that relationship. Uh, and it, you bring honor to Christ when we do that. When we do what Christ asked us to do as husband and wife, we bring honor to him. We bring honor to what he's doing. That shows that the power of Christ rests upon uh, our marriage and our lives. See, people only what people see is what they can relate to. If they don't see that, you can tell them all how saved you are all you want to. And you, you'd be really saved, you know, because we're being saved. Saved, being saved, shall be saved. It's three phases of salvation. It's three phases of salvation. Saved, being saved, shall be saved. Let me qualify that. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 9. But we have ascended of depths in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Watch this. Who delivered us, past ten, from so great a death. That was the, the sin of Adam. Yes, sir. And doeth Deliver. That's today. He's in the delivering process today. And what? Trust that he will. You have three phases of salvation. Past, present, and future. That's why you got to keep going. It ain't, I got saved. You got to stay saved. You got to keep going on the process. You got to keep going through the process to finalize what God started. It's not, I got pregnant. It's that, did you deliver? Did the child mature, grow up, and become what Christ wants us to be, is mature, a, a grown individual. Amen. That's why I'm coming back to the other scripture in Ephesians. In Ephesians, I mean, yeah, in Ephesians, but in Ephesians 4, he gives you a ministry, verse 11, 411. For the perfecting of, he said, he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting or the equipping of the saints. You got a ministry here to equip you. Give you the information. Amen. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Knowledge of the Son of God. 
unto a complete man. That's a complete. Get that word for us. Get, that's complete. Teleos. Complete man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, 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 we start so that we can go all the way to completion. Yes, sir. In everything that we do, God wants us to be completed, perfect, uh, all the way down to right there, 13 verse. Right up. Perfect, perfect, right there. Tell it. Yes, see, that is to be complete. Growth, mental, and moral character. Completeness, a full age man, perfect. God wants us to be complete. We're growing up to be complete, mentally, every aspect. So you can be grown in one area and a baby in another area. Yes, sir. But we want to be complete, fully grown. That's what the Word of God is designed for. <laughs> Second Timothy 3 and 16. <laughs> All the scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, teaching, reproof, that is to in instruct, uh, for a correction, for instruction in righteousness. What the word of God is given for? Correction. For correction, for, uh, doctrine, reproof, yes. instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be, perfect. there it is again. God is interested in us being complete. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished into all good works. And so back to Ephesians there where he, uh, at verse 20, uh, submit in verse 21, submit yourself in the fear of the Lord, one to another in the fear of God. So here he wants us to learn how to honor, respect one another, submit one to another. Now, Understand when we're talking about submitting one to another, the only that we can properly biblically submit is by the scriptures. This is not the reader digest or some some other book somebody else wrote, and you do it according to Doctor Spark or uh, you know whoever the philosopher. This is our book, so I got to submit. According to the word, submitting ourselves one to another. What he's saying to us, the submission is through the word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just doing what you want me to do, and I'm just doing what you want me, but I'm doing what you want me to do through the word of God. Yes, yes. See, because you know, we all got our way, we've been reared, mm -hmm. and so we all we want to look at what mama and way daddy did it back then. And they done it right, praise the Lord. Right. But wonder if they did not do it. But well, wonder if they haven't done it right and you want to do it like they did. It. Mm -hmm. You know, like mom about the ham. Yeah. Yeah. Mama kept cutting the ham off. <laughs> and one boy said, why in the world you cut all this ham off of this, this, this big old chunk of ham off of that? And they kept doing it because the girl saw mama do it, she did it. But the man want to know why the world cut all this ham off. And she, and she said her mama did it. She found out her mama did it because her pan wasn't big enough to put the whole ham in there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you just can't do it because you got to know why you're doing what you're doing. We got to have the word of God to biblically do it right. Submitting yourself in the fear of God and... Uh, uh, to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. In other words, that, that husband is the leadership in that home. He's supposed to be the leadership in his home. And that's why we tell men to be the leader in the home. I know women want to sometimes, you know, they, they can kind of raise up there, but the man is, God divinely instituted that in the beginning. It's biblical. <laughs> now, if you want something that's not biblical, then you don't need to be in the church. You need to be outside the church. I had a girl one time tell me I was doing a wedding. She, she said, now, I want you to do my weddings. But she said, but I don't want you to put into it, submit. I said, well, you need to get somebody else. I told her, yeah. They still together today. Uh, <laughs> she, she just... 
I said, you want me to put in him for him to love you, right? Because that's the other part of it here. No, I am, I'm not taking out anything that's in here. We just got to do it. Now, if you don't want to be submitted to nobody, do like Paul said, don't get married. Amen. Don't get married. You don't have to worry about submitting to him. You still got to submit to God. You're going to submit to somebody, your boss or somebody, but you ain't got to submit to him. All right? Why submit yourself to your own husband? Don't be listening to somebody else. Submit to your own. As unto the Lord. And uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Remember when I started out saying how the parallel, God put the church and the natural marriage on the same level. He paralleled. He says, for, uh, for, uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even the same as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He's the savior of the body. He, he gave his very life to take care of. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. And I always qualify the everything because I just qualified it from the beginning. Everything that's biblical. Everything that's biblical. He tell you, I, I, you know what? Just go jump off the bridge. That ain't biblical. Don't obey him on that. Hmm? Uh, there's things that the scripture gives us to do as we're going to keep reading that you are to obey your husband in. Husband, love your wives. Even, just like Christ also, loved the church and gave himself for it. That's why when you talk about you want a wife, that means you want to work. That means you want to get a job. A job. <laughs> you know, you want to work. Because you finna take care of a family. Right. You, you start out as a wife, and if you uh, come together, you possibly gonna have some additions. And that's the only reason that you really get married. I know some people have problems with that, but it's Bible. First Corinthians seven and verse one. <laughs> Ain't got no problem with what you get married for. Why are you gonna get another problem? Because Paul said, when you get married, you're gonna have some more problems. Amen. As beautiful as they may be, uh, as handsome as he may be, you gonna you just getting some beautiful problems and a handsome problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when I get out the book. <laughs> Concerning the thing whereof we wrote unto you thee, it is good for a man not to have a relationship. That word touch means sexual relationship with a woman. Then the next verse qualifies it. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. That means don't be messing with nobody else's. That's right. And let every woman have her own husband. See, get your own. If you want to, that's all the reason marriage is in, in too much for companionship. I can I can be a companion to you and we don't have to be in the same house. Yes, sir. We can talk a distance. But the purpose of this relationship of, of coming together is because as we go on in that seventh chapter, and I'm not trying to do that right now is to avoid <coughs> fornication. That's against God. All right? Back in Ephesians. And, of course, when you don't, you know, understand, you can always raise your hand and get some qualification. Verse 26 says, that you might sanctify, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, with the washing of the water of the word of God. Look, look like love does a cleanse. Look like love cleanses. 
Amen. Because we parallel in this. For God so loved. See, love is a power. Many waters can't quench that. Is that a uh, song of Solomon 8, 5, 6, somewhere in there? Verse 7. No, verse 6. Set a seal upon thy heart. Verse 6. As long as a seal upon thy arm, for love is strong as death. In fact, love is so strong that it eradicates death. That's why Jesus came, because he came to eradicate death. It's stronger than death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Yes, it is. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown them. If a man will give all his substance for his house, for love, it would utterly be condemned or despised. You, you, can't, you can't even uh, give enough to put out this, this love affair. You can't. Let me, let me say, many waters cannot quench the flame of love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man try to buy it with everything he owned, he couldn't do it. Amen. He couldn't do it. There's no way that you could uh, 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 buy uh, this here. You can put out this love. That's why God goes through so many extremes to save us. You didn't know it, but he was doing, he was, he was, he was putting roadblocks out in front of you. You know, the mazes, the maze thing. You know, he was doing so many things just to, and you thought you just running your way and God put a block there. You was all mad, but God was saving your life. That's right. Making you go back another way. Until finally you found that door, which he is. He's the door to the sheepfold. We found the door. All our lives were going through a maze until finally we found entrance to this wonderful Savior. To this wonderful Savior, the Lord be magnified. Be magnified. Hallelujah. And uh, and so, uh, you, you can't quench it. You can't put it out. And so, back here in Ephesians five, stay with us. Hope and lost nobody here. Uh, that uh, so he he washes us with this wonderful love of God. He said that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of the water. By the word 26, he takes the scripture. These scriptures is to cleanse us as well. That's why it's important to, to understand the word of God. And once understanding the word of God, the deity was making reference to doing it. You done heard it. You done seen what happens when you don't listen to the word. All of us, if you serve God any time, when you... The stop sign says stop, and we thought it meant go, but we went across it. We got penalized for that. That's right. That's right. You're going to get penalized. That's right. Because you're not going to break a law. Not a jot, not a tittle of his word shall pass from the law of God. The dotting of the I or the crossing of the T, whatever he said, that's what he means. Right. Praise God. And you're not going to get by. You, you think you are, but you're not. You just deceive. You deceive your own self. Amen. Washing of the water by the word. Why? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Have another spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy without blemish. So, ought men to love their wives and their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. If you love yourself, he said you ought to love your wife because when you take her in, you're saying, look, this is me now. Even in the beginning, he said, now this is bone. The Lord told Adam, this is bone. Well, Adam said, it's bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. That's this part of me. And no man ever hated him own self. You don't, you don't get in the mirror. Is that something really wrong with you? And start <laughs> hitting on yourself, cutting on yourself, kicking on yourself. 
Yeah. And it's it's something wrong with some folks. Mm -hmm. But you don't you love yourself too much for that. Oh, most times you get in the mirror, you patting on yourself. Huh? You, that's you know what you're doing. You you straightening yourself. That's the way it is to be with that woman or that wife. That's that relationship that we're to have. Praise God. And, 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 and so this love that this man that Christ has for us, he has it for the church. That yes, yes. he's constantly in the giving. He's constantly on the giving. He's constantly giving himself for us that we can have a better way. That he that we can that we can grow up and that we can be uh, uh, confident. You know, I got confidence today in Jesus. Yes. Yes. I do. Yes. I got confidence. That's why when things go wrong, I don't get in panic mode. Right. I don't I don't get panicky because I, I done found out through the years that this man loves me. Yes, he does. And he ain't funny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He done proved to me. He told me when he opened it, told me to get started pastoring. He said, I'm gonna take care of you. You won't beg, I'll take care of you. Well, God's been true to his word. He's been true. God is a supplier. He, he makes sure that he takes care of us. And that's the way the husband got to make the wife feel. Yeah, we got a great responsibility. We got a great responsibility. At the same time, the wife got to pat it because you're going to suffer some things too. That didn't mean that his love and that that doesn't mean that you didn't that you won't suffer anything that you won't go through some things. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's why you got to be willing to endure Ooh. and go through. Yeah. You got to become right. one. You yeah. got to suffer together. Yeah. Amen. He said, "If you suffer with me, you yeah. reign with me." Right. Praise God. Uh, Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> me and my wife will suffer some things. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's why I don't care what people talk about today. Come on. <laughs> when my car was going on the street, jumping out of gears, and we didn't have, we couldn't keep ice food in the ice box. When we were going through the process, you wasn't with us. That's right. But she stuck it out with me then. She wasn't ready to jump up and leave me then. Hey Amen. She said, "Man, we gonna stick it together." Hey Amen. We ain't just saying we ain't, we split that uh, that uh, leg part in half. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I ain't I ain't just cracking. I'm back. I'm back. Yes, sir. But but we we we, we that. That wasn't it. We, 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 we're going to suffer together. We're going to go through. And you got to see that God is going to take care of things. So yeah. when we get in a little tight spot, don't start getting all panicky and worried. Right. Just right. relax. Yeah. Take a chill pill. Woo, and let the Lord show us. Amen. Yeah. That's Moses did at the Red Sea when things looked all around us. Looked like things were closing in. Just hold on. Yeah. God know how to make a way. Yeah. God know how to make a way. Yeah. 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 And so you gotta, you gotta stick it out. You gotta love them. Man. Yeah. man don't hate his own body. Just see, nourish and charity even as the Lord. But we're members. Verse thirty. For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. For this cause, for this cause. Shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife? And they too shall be one flesh. They will come together. They're going to be one. They are one. This is a great mystery. Watch what he say now. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. See, Christ gets in his relationship and he begins to make us one. We on the oneness. First Corinthians uh, one and ten. 
I beseech you, brother, by the name of the Lord Jesus. He's talking to the Roman church, the Corinthian church, rather. That you all speak to what? Amen. Uh, and that there be no divisions among you. But that ye be perfectly, every, that word perfectly shows up so regularly in the scripture. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. My Lord. That's what we got to come to. Yes. Just like uh, 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 the church has to come in harmony and come in relationship. One and become one. So a home got to become one. Yes. That's right. I know my wife ain't never talked my children against me. I'm still daddy when it was good and was daddy when it was bad. Hmm? You can tell you you can mess your own home up. You can you can you can you can blow, uh, just just uh, 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 destruct uh, self inside destruct self destruct. You can destroy your own home. Amen. Because of the way you uh, uh, play his 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 uh, role down. See, you got to make sure you keep him in this place, and a man got to make sure you keep the wife where she's supposed to be. Baby, you, you know, and that's not a good thing. You lose that respect. You lose that honor. There's been a lot of things that cause division and destruction in a home. Amen. You know, and at that time, we may not be thinking that's what was going on, but at the time, that's exactly what's going on. Right. Because of words and actions and so forth. I'm the man when it's good, and I'm the man when it's bad. Praise God. Especially... When I'm doing, and I'm doing all I can do. When I'm doing all I can do. Yes, sir. Amen. We sing that song. When you're done all, when you're praying all you can pray. When you're said all you can say. Yes, when you're done all you can do, just stand and see the salvation of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to make sure, see, Christ is taking care of business. And every relationship has to be tried by fire to find out what kind of sword is it. You know, you know, I don't blame a woman for looking for a man uh, for uh, that security because that's the that's what a woman looks for. That's what they look for. You know, they look for that along with other things. But uh, they look for that. But uh, what about once you get the secure things? Amen. What about that? See, there's things that still works in a relationship that God is going to make sure that you be tried in it. You got all a lot of money. God going to make somewhere to see do, is love really the binding element? Yes. Or the money. Is Do I really love you or I just love what you got? Am I submitted to you because of the love of the scriptures or submitted to you for what I can get? So we got to make sure it's the real stuff because fire is going to try every, every relationship fire is going to try. And that's the word of God. That's the judgment of God's word. Every man's word is going to be tried or what sort of it is. It's like the church here. When we're building, we're building on the word of God because I can't afford to build on anything else. No, no, uh, uh, again, I always use Reader Digest and any other house and garden. I can't build on none of this uh, Plato or Socrates. I got to build on the word of God. Yes, yeah. Because when everything else fails, yeah. the word of God will yeah. stand. Yeah. Matthew 7 and verse 24 says, Whoso hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I like them unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. Yes. That when the floods and rains and the winds come, he says that uh, 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 the house didn't fall because it was established upon a rock. Yes. And every one of these that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Oh. 
I like him unto a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. The same way the floods and winds came, the same elements came, but the house fell because it wasn't founded upon the rock. That's why what we're saying here today, we got to make sure we're doing it according to the word of God because floods and wind and rain is coming. It is coming. And if we're not on the rock, we're going to be washed away. We're going to be blown away. But if we're on the rock, amen, we're going to reel the rock. And when the storm stops, we're still on the rock. Praise God. Well, we got to make sure our relationship is on the rock. That means that our relationship is in Christ. That we're doing it according to what Christ has said to do. Amen. And we often say that uh, on a man from the man's standpoint, he got to be 80% man, about 20% woman. He got to be able to sometimes run the vacuum clean and wash the dishes. That's the, that's the woman part. <laughs> Amen. And a woman got to have, you know, about 20% man sometimes, you know. She might have to go out there and uh, mow grass or something sometimes. Or do something that's uh, a little man. You got to work together. You got to work together. You know? And uh, uh, what do you say? Make him me. Oh, make him me. Oh. <laughs> I thought you know, I'm glad that's what you said. Amen. Make me him me. Amen. Yeah, done. Amen. Make it, make, it, make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. Amen. Time with you. I ain't washing no dishes. That's a woman thing. Amen. There's a lot of things that's a is a woman thing. There's a lot of things that's a man thing, but we, we're working together. Work together. Praise God. We're working together. I remember the time that I didn't work. I was didn't have a job. And circumstances didn't allow. It. And I was called in the ministry. My wife was working all the time. But I made sure I did my girl's hair, cooked and everything else while she was there. I took care of that part. I'm home, thing was taken care of. That didn't make me no less of a man. Right, right, right. But I wasn't looking for her, just lay up there and let her do that all the all life, you know. I wasn't for that role to be that way. And I told her, told her, told her this here, just because you're working, that ain't your money. You got quiet, didn't you? <laughs> uh, did I say that? Amen. Amen. Make sure I said that, you know. Because, you know, sometimes we can, we, can, we can do that and then we, we feel like, you know, I'm calling shots. No, you ain't calling no shots, you know? I'm still who I am. I'm just in this. We're working together and we get through this here. Praise God. Temporary fix. Praise God. That's called understanding. Amen. It's called understanding. And uh, we know we we know these kind of things happen, and it brings it brings failure and destruction to a home. Yeah, bring destruction, division in a home. Divided house can't stand. That's right. Divided house can't stand. So he tells us this is what he's talking about. He's talking about how. Uh, Christ and the church is the same way that a home is to be uh, uh, handled. And uh, verse, uh, he's about verse 33, Ephesians 5, 33 says, Nevertheless, that every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And let me tell you, I love me. I don't love the stuff about me, but I love me. Do y'all understand that? Amen. I don't love that damaged part. But I take care of me. I want to make sure me is taken care of. So if I love me like that, I ought to make sure I love to see my wife being taken care of. She's happy. Amen. Nevertheless, there are one of you in particular love so wife, even as yourself. And wife, see that you reverence, respect your husband. So much goes into this here. Yeah. So much goes into this. Sometimes I've seen wives make husbands look so, and I'm saying, ooh, we, so that I'm going to never do that one now. You ever seen a woman stand up you? 
Make a man feel like, you know, crawling somewhere to hide out. That's just bad. And I told him over the years, my mama and I got that from, I got this from mama and them. He said, boy, wherever you started at, that's what we're going to finish it. So don't make me do something there. Because you make me, if you make someone think that I'm not who I am, don't let them know I am who I am. You be in the grocery store and stuff, and we're clowning and said, now, nah, y'all cut up in here? We ain't going to wait till we get home. We're going to work our way from here to home. <laughs> they meant that. <laughs> they meant that. Wherever we got started at, that's where we're going to go. That's where it's going to go. So we need a reverence. We need to respect one another. Amen. You know, and sometimes we have, you know, everybody, husband and wife, have a little look to each other. You know, like, you know. You all right? You know, you know. Because we do some things. It's different to get up and sometimes you have on your head, uh, on your back, you know, whatever. That's part of just being human, earthly. That's part of it. You just get up and you just don't know where it came from. You know, but we got enough of the word of God. We ought to begin to hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. We need to begin to, you know, get a breakthrough. Amen. Don't let that overflow into that uh, relationship, into that home. Work on it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. But we need to. We need to be uh, conscious of uh, what we're really working on. Amen. Constantly being on top of that. So Ephesians 5 shows us this, this, this wonderful relationship of Christ and the church. And, and we showed them last night. He, 1 Peter 3, how we're to uh, subject ourselves. Peter says the same thing, almost what he says here. And uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, when he says that, uh, let's just go back there for a moment, just to recap. I'm about done for the day. I'm not trying to give you an everlasting sermon or everlasting life. We're just going to keep chipping at it. Because this is important. It, it, ain't no sense we talking about how how much we feel with the Holy Ghost. And we can't work through these kind of issues. The power of the Holy Ghost, the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues, is to ignite the Word. Make the Word alive to us. Amen. Empowers the Word. It's to empower it. Praise God. It's to override things that come up when you use that scripture. Isaiah 59, was it 19, when the enemy would come in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord raised up a standard against it. That wasn't just the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost combined with the word of God because the Holy Ghost is given the word of God the power to sustain whatever come against you. Amen. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and its lower from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, and we've said not the enemy just coming in, but really the enemy is in a me. Amen. And when that old spirit start rising, that old academic spirit start rising up, you need something to be able to hold that back. And that's what the word of God does. Oh, yes. That's what the spirit of God does. Yes. It'll come right to your mind. Don't yeah. say it. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, that's right. And you're going to have to just disrespect it. Because it's going to come to your mind what to do. Amen. They're going to tell you, don't do it. You're going to bless God and then do it anyway. Well, you're looking for an explosion. Amen. Because where there's no wood. That I, uh, Proverbs 26, 20. I think, I don't know. Yeah. Where no wood is, the fire go out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. Nobody caring nothing. When you stop putting wood on the fire, it calms down. And that's how we got to the soft answer. Turns away wrath. 
Yeah, that's just wisdom in a relationship, how to keep things together. Not avoiding the conversation, but talking in a way. Amen. I'm still working on that part. I'm still working on that part. You know, just because, but you know what? I'm right here. You know? Not being a harm, just letting you know, hey. I said, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> then once I recognize where I'm at, okay, now well, you know, I, 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 are you hearing me? Are we under, being understood here? Good work. Cause I, see, I want to be saved after I get you preaching to you all. I want to be saved with the ED on the end of completely. <laughs> Because emotions get involved. But God can save our emotions. God can get in our emotions. Save our emotions. Praise God. That's how powerful he is. And then, uh, 1 Peter 3 and 1 said, Likewise, be in subjection to your own husbands, as that if any obey not the word, that means if the husband ain't obeying what the word of God says, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Watch what it says. Let wives fit, uh, wives fit in with your husband's plans. For then if they refuse to listen when you talk to them about the Lord, they will be won by your respectful, pure behavior. Your godly lie will speak to them better than any word. And I know y'all have done that sometimes. You just got quiet and you would have had a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we come back with a little tail. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, man. That hurt so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I was wrong. Mm. Amen. But you, but you, but you held on like Sarah did. My, my, my. Yeah. Amen. Showing that honor and respect to Abraham, respecting him as the Lord, and talk to God because God can do something. Yes, he can. Divine order. First Corinthians eleven. I'm trying to find a landing spot here. Trust me. I'm trying to stop. <laughs> First Corinthians eleven, verse one. He said, be ye followers of me. Paul is talking to the church. He's talking to the woman. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. See, Paul was telling the woman, the church, you follow me because I'm following my head. Then he tells you that. Now I praise you, brother, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you to know the head of every man is Christ. So you got to, wives, you got to always remember that Christ is the head of man. Right. It's man's head. So then when man is getting out of order, you got to talk to Christ Amen. about the man. Amen. That's, that's what you got to talk to. Because when you try to talk, when you try to be the man, the head of that man, if something God put in man and said, it ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't working. You got a few of them that'll get down, but some, most, most of them ain't getting down. See? <laughs> But I will have you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is man. See, again, Paul is saying that God has made that man head over that, 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 that woman. That's why when you come into re marital relationship, you're saying that you want this direction over your life. Not that you can't think. Not that you, you, you're ignorant. But there can't be two people Anything that somebody says there's two heads, it's a freak. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Different people got different ways. 
every, my, my order in my house is, we, most time when we get ready to do something in the house, I go in and do what I'm going to do in the house, and I say, you take it from here. I'm not going to be, do you want right. to do you want to do You know how it is. People try to figure it out. Now, some of y'all already figured it out all right, but that, the colors and everything. Then some man say, you just go ahead and do all you want, whatever you want. See, it do that way. And that works, it ain't no problem. Ain't nobody mad with that. Ain't nobody mad with that. But when it comes down to certain decisions, if it fails, God looking at you. Now, you know you was the head of the house. You know I put you in that charge. And you just, that's the way it went to Adam. That's right. I put you in charge. That's right. Somebody got to be in charge. See, I say even if it's just 51%. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, just all in. The head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So even Christ had a head over him. It's called divine order. God. Christ, man, woman. And then the children comes on in from there. That's, what, that's the order of God. And when we stay in that order, it's, 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 it's peace. Somebody said the wife is running the children, the children run the wife, the wife is running the husband, and the husband just runs. <laughs> I'll stop. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're glad. Get a song now. We're going to hear from our friends. Somebody got a question? Good yeah. first call. Good teaching. I don't want to sit down and I keep going. Go ahead. Chief. Question. We're using uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and it talked about uh, division. It's when you said there should be no division. I'm kind of confused because you said the word comes to divide anyway. So, uh, okay. I mean, you understand my question? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, what, what is happening here in this statement that uh, uh, what's happening in this statement now she's going back to uh, we made a statement a, a few days ago, Matthews, and Matthews, uh, uh, where it says, I come to bring division. I didn't, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. That's in Matthews, uh, Might be. Matthew, what was it now? Matthew's ten. Yeah, ten thirty-four. Matthew's ten thirty-four. Question. Everybody heard a question, right? All right. It says here, "Think not that I come." This is Jesus speaking. To send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That sword there was the word of God. Right. Hebrews 4 and 12, that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to divide and asunder the soul and spirit, the joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Right. So this sword that he brought, when he came, he brought the word of God. Right. Jesus was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Take John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So when he showed up, he brought division. Him showing up, the Word showing up, brought division. Because the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and other folks was already totally outside of what he was doing. It's not that uh, when he said uh, the sword brings division because somebody is not wanting to do what the word of God wants to do. 
-hmm. All right. And so that's where the word of God brings division. You says that he said, let there be no division among you. The reason it was division among them because they wasn't doing the word of God. Amen. That's why it was division. They wasn't doing it. When the church is, everybody's on the same page, there is no division. Amen. Let there be no division. That's why he said, let there be no. He's telling them, that's why he writes his letter, because there was division. And it goes on and says, we got a Paul, we got a Paulus. We got a, we know we got Paul, some got Peter, and some got Apollos. Yes, yes, then he said, who are those but people you believe by? One water, one planet, but God gives the increase. And so he was saying that, that's why we, we said a few days ago, uh, yeah, we said a few days ago that, uh, when we're sitting here and we're training ministers, we ain't had a good meeting in a long time, but they still know what I, we, we teach it. We're showing them they have options to constantly question me about what I'm teaching and preaching and get understanding of it. So then when we're standing, we're standing as one man. Ezra stood before the gate as one man. Yeah. It wasn't everybody with their own opinion. Yeah. Somebody comes on you, they're telling you what they think. I can't even tell you what I think. Well, I guess I can. We just found that out. But what I'm thinking got to be in the spirit of the Lord. We found that out, Paul, when we in this lesson, that Paul had the right as the authority, as the apostle. He says in the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians, the Lord said, and he said, now the Lord ain't saying this, but I'm saying this. But he had got God authority, got it back, Paul, to, to, to have that authority. Well, the same thing is here, you see. But if you counsel, I don't counsel you outside the scripture. That's right. Are you following me? Amen. Because I ain't got no refuge if something come up. If I'm telling you something outside of the scripture, right. I don't have nothing to defend myself with when something happens. <laughs> I got to have the scriptures to, 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 to support me, to stand on. You see. So... That's what that ideal is. We got to be as one man. Amen. And so we got to be perfectly joined together. Amen. We got to be preaching the same thing. Amen. There are things that we may have, some things we still don't see all together together, but that's all right at this point. But we're still working to see. Amen. Isaiah 50, 52, verse 8. The watchman shall lift up the voice. Yeah. The voice is Christ. That's yes. right. The watchman's is the ministry that's watching for the people's soul. Yeah. With the voice together, yeah. they shall sing. That's a gospel message. Amen. I could take you and show you that. I don't take the time tonight today unless y'all just <laughs> They sang in the same song. Yeah. Of Moses and the Lamb. It's a song we're singing. That's right. The Old and New Testament. We're singing this song. For they shall see how? I, I. They, for they shall see the same way. Yeah. When the Lord shall bring again Zion. Yeah. They're going to say the same thing, see the same thing. Uh -huh. And that's what the whole labor is for us to say the same thing. So that we can sing together. Yeah. Somebody off note over here, we saying, ah, oh. boy, you hear them off note. Somebody out of key over here. That's terrible singing. <laughs> we got to harmonize. Harmonize. Isn't that right? Yes, yeah. yeah. amen. That's, just, it's, that's what he's saying. And so yeah. the division comes because somebody ain't doing the word of God. That's right. That's division in the home, division in the church, division wherever, that somebody's not lining up with the law. Oh, Any other questions? Been good. Lord be magnified. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. You are my brother.
Oh, no, 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 yeah, 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 yes, yes, sorry, yes. Glad for Mac Michaels here, we'll, we'll give him an opportunity to have something to say here today. Amen, amen. Yeah, the microphone, is right here in the front row. Feel free to have something to say if you like. Amen. 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 Amen.